Hello everyone, welcome back. Larry here again to talk about this thing right to my right here. This thing, this keg, is actually something called the Keg Mentor. And I've been using it as my primary, most for the most part, my primary fermentation uh, vessel, especially for pressure fermenting and also non-pressure fermenting as well for well, over a year now. I got this thing probably, I think back in the fall of 2021, if I'm correct. And I've been using it ever since. You may have seen it in a lot of my videos. Um, talked about it on some live streams in the past, right? Well, here it is, the long-awaited uh, review video. And I'm going to tell you why I prefer this as my primary go-to fermenter for, uh, for, for most uh, use cases that I have. Unless I'm going to split a batch to do try different yeasts or, or different dry hop schedules or something where I would really want to split a 10-gallon batch. Um, Otherwise, I would go with this as my primary fermenter, and, I'll, and I'm here to tell you why. First of all, for those who've never even seen or heard of what a keg mentor is, what you're looking at here is the middle size model of the family, right? There's a large, medium, and small. The, the small, I think, is like 7.6 US gallons, which I think is 29 liters, if I'm not mistaken. And there's this 13.2 US gallon size, which is this one, which is 50 liters capacity. And there's a larger, taller one, uh, which is the 15.3 US gallons, which is, I think, like 58 liters, I believe. And it's stainless steel. It's rated for pressure, which is why I have it um, pr primarily. And it's, I think it's rated up to like 36 PSI or two and a half bar for pressure, which, more than double than anything that you'll need for fermenting in. But also plenty enough to also serve in as well, which is this can also be used as an actual keg. It's a, it's a multi-purpose gadget, right? It also comes with a four inch tri-clamp opening and lid, which has two ball lock posts on it, one for the gas and one for the uh, liquid and a pressure relief valve. So why did I get it? And why am I saying it's my preferred uh, fermenter vessel, fermentation vessel? Well, I have several reasons. It's great for 10 gallon batches, which is what I've been primarily been making for the past several years, right? I started off five gallon batch uh, brewing many years ago, 22 years ago, eventually upgraded to the 10 gallon size about five years ago, maybe, right? And ever since then, I've been splitting my batches between two different fermenters out of necessity, um, which I still do for, um, not, of the, not of necessity, but like I said, through for doing different yeast uh, and things like that. But what if I just wanted to just rack my entire 10 gallon batch from my brew kettle right into uh, a single pressure vessel? Uh, this would be the thing I would use for that. Now I've used other um, conicals and fermentation vessels. I actually had a Spike CF10 once upon a time, but this thing fits perfectly inside a single keg kegerator. It doesn't have any protrusions uh, like the Spike Flex Plus does that, that keep that from happening. It doesn't have a stand that you have to mount it on like the Firmzilla or any other type of plastic fermenter with a stand. It's short enough and small enough width-wise to fit right into that single keg kegerator. The point is, is that I can use temperature control if I so much care to. It's also got really nice built-in carry handles that are easy to grip, especially with a guy with large hands and something that weighs uh, dozens of pounds, uh, or actually uh, many dozens of pounds when full trying to transport a keg like this from where I work and, and brew out in my garage here, if I needed to bring this into the house or down to the basement for any reason, um, why, uh, I can grab both handles, have a friend even uh, carry a handle and carry it down there. My other fermenters uh, tend to have the really skinny little uh, wire handles, which really, really pinch on your fingers trying to lift and carry them things down and around. Uh, I, that's always been a, a pet peeve of mine with those cheap handles. Not a problem with keg mentor, nice built-in grips. And it's multi-purpose. Like I was saying, uh, it could also be used as a keg as well as a fermenter. And I've done both uh, the past year already, which is a good thing I postponed my, uh, my review of this from early on when I first got it till a year later when I've done a number of different things with this thing. I've used it as a fermenter countless times, but I've also used it as a keg at least once, maybe a couple times if I, if I remember correctly. And that has worked out great. Did I say it's easy to clean? I did not. This thing is easy to clean, uh, easier to clean. Is anything really easy to clean? I guess a bucket, <laughs> maybe. But, but what I liked about this is that with the four inch opening, you can get your forearm up in there with a little sponge or cloth and wipe around the upper uh, lid of this thing on the underside and get all that wiped off nice and clean like. But it's also big enough to use a keg brush 
to get down in there and scrub the sides and bottoms uh, pretty easily. Of course, you can soak it too or whatever, but the point is some of my other fermenters with, the, with like smaller openings, I uh, can't get my hand down in them. And this one's not a problem. Also with it being stainless steel, it's easy to scrub, right? I mean, it doesn't, uh, you don't have to worry about it being scratched like plastic, right? It also has a smaller number of uh, loose parts to assemble in this assemble. It's basically just the keg, the lid, and a tri-clamp, whereas uh, some of the other gadgets have numerous things that you have to disassemble, clean, reassemble. Well, you have to disassemble, clean, sanitize, and reassemble, and maybe re-sanitize again after assembly. Uh, this thing is pretty easy to break down and really easy to put back together. One thing I did to enhance the product is I, I removed the floating dip tube that came with this thing. I mean, it worked okay, but like other floating dip tubes, uh, it's still possible and has happened more than once, which is why it's a gripe of mine, that the bollock posts that you use in these kind of pressure vessel fermenters, uh, they tend to clog uh, if you use them as a, as a fermenter, right? Um, no matter, I know they're floating, but there's still stuff floating on top. There's little bits of whatever that can get up there, cause flow problems and the like, right? So what I did is take a Floated 2.0, uh, which is a very good product, by the way. Um, it's got a little mesh filter on there. Actually, two mesh filters, an outer one and an inner one. And by using that floating dip tube and putting it on there, I've had no problem transferring the wort or whatever beer uh, out of one uh, vessel into another. So now that I've docked it with my keg mentor, I use this as a fermenter, use the Flota 2.0. So when I rack to my kegs later, I get none, um, basically no sediment whatsoever, except for any maybe residual yeast still floating around, which will settle to the bottom and be poured off with the first pint like I normally do with my kegs, but no clogs. If you were curious as to where to get one of these, I got mine from morebeer.com. Being here in the US and this is being manufactured by Kegland in Australia, probably manufactured in China actually and, and uh, whatever. But uh, either way, I have to buy it through a US distributor, which uh, for me was morebeer.com. So if you're going to want to look into getting one of these, if you do me a favor, I'll put a, an affiliate link for more beer. Uh, down in the video description for, for you to go click on. If you wouldn't mind using that link, I'll get that small commission for all my effort here. Okay, well, got any questions? Put them in the comments down below. Give me that thumbs up if you like it. Subscribe if you haven't, and I will talk to you all next time.